Simply put, I can't wait. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron, and for today's video we are headed back to the world of Last Epoch. The good old people over at 11th Hour Games has now dropped on us the 7.10 patch preview. Now a lot of this stuff we already know because they've been getting, giving us little tidbits every single week, and it's sometimes every single day, and I've been covering them in my weekly news roundups. But now we have the entire patch preview all in one place, and that is what we're going to be discussing here today. As always, I will share my thoughts. Please feel free to share yours in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to support smaller channels. All right. Let's jump right into this. Now we know from experience that once we get the patch preview from 11th Hour Games, we know we are a week, maximum two weeks away from getting the patch. And normally it's some kind of happy median in between those two. So it'll be here very, very soon. And the biggest thing coming to 7.10 is the loot filter. Now, if you don't know what a loot filter is, Basically, what that means is whenever you're playing an action RPG, there's tons of loot that drops on the ground. And normally you have to manually look through it to see if it's anything you can use. And literally one out of a hundred items end game could potentially be an item for your build. Well, now you will be able to go in and dictate what items and likely what affixes are on that item drop and shown to you. So all you have to do is pick up the stuff that actually drop and then bypass the rest. It is a very, very cool and essential feature in a modern day next gen action RPG. But normally you have to take a loot filter that someone else created and export it into or import it into the game, which will be available for last epoch, but they will also have their own internal loot filter available and this is just a little example show all keys show all exalted items hide all normal items hide all magic items and then it shows you here a selected loot filter ignite warpath so one that was imported into the game it should make the game feel a whole lot better especially from the gear grinding standpoint and the ability to run multiple runs now what this says next is something we didn't know Patch 7.10 includes sweeping changes to defenses in Last Epoch, with glancing blows being repurposed. Protections being replaced by resistances and other changes we are working on a developer blog to share with you in the near future. So we will get that developer blog before we get 7.10 official, which will be nice. Now, glancing blows is the quintessential normally number one stat you want for your character. It basically halves all the damage that you receive from enemies. So normally what you want is critical strike avoidance 100%. That means that you will never take crits and then glancing blow damage 100%. That normal crit that is now a normal hit gets cut in half. It's huge for survivability. So I am really curious how that mainline stat is going to be changed and how it's going to affect current builds. Protections being replaced by resistances, I think that's literally just a name change, so that shouldn't make a big deal. We've made significant changes to Chapter 2 and Chapter 3, as well as visual updating parts of Chapter 6. We have posted some of those before and after screenshots, and I have those for you right now. Again, I have covered these in a previous video. So right here, outskirts, before, after. I'm just going to go through this quick. Before, upper district after i mean it looks so much better armory before after before the lower district after before after so visual improvements are coming to the game again they've taken a lot of heat as far as hey this game doesn't look like a next gen game you have to remember that this is an indie title 11th hour games are not do not have the budget of poe don't have the budget of blizzard for d4 right so they are updating the game as they go along and a lot of these visual improvements look amazing so just be patient with them systems 
we are making changes to skill respects to have them feel less punishing. And again, this is something that they have covered in the past. Currently, despecializing skills placed in a specialization slot are always set to level 1. Starting with patch 7.10, this minimum skill level will scale with character level. This is intended to make respects feel less punishing while still preventing hot swapping of skills. So let me explain. If you have a skill that's level 20 and you decide you no longer want that skill, level 20 is the max skill and you put in another one, it'll still drop all the way down to level 1. But it'll scale with the character level, not enemy level. So it should make it really easy if you have a leveled up character to level that skill back up to level 20. But again, you can't do it immediate. It'll still take a little bit of time, but it should level way faster. We're making changes to crafting. This includes the introduction of critical success as well as positive equivalent to fractures and the removal, removal of destructive fractures. So right now, what they are doing is basically getting rid of the base tier, that destructive fracture, so that's gone, and then adding in a new top tier, which is a critical success. And down here, it talks about potentially new functionality. Potentially. So we'll see when it actually drops. But ultimately, damaging fractures can no longer be crafted on. That doesn't change. One affix, only one affix has its tier reduced by one or two, and this cannot bring the affix below tier one. So normally, obviously, if you get a damaging fracture, at least right now, for the most part, that that item is toast. You're no longer going to use it. There's no way that item will be available for end game. And normally you just immediately scrap it. So now, potentially, if it is one of the affixes that you're not super fond of and it only drops by one or two, that item still worth something. You can still use it. And then again, of course, destructive fractures are gone. Game balance and skills. And what they did for game balance is only a couple of things. Now, right now, if you're playing through the campaign and you're fighting a boss and you end up dying, let's say you took 50% of that boss's life. Well, when you run back to go ahead and fight that boss again, it will still have 50% of its life gone. So technically, even if your character is under leveled or you have bad gear, you can just keep grinding over and over again and get its life down a little bit at a time until you kill that boss. Well, unfortunately, they are changing that. Now, if you die to a boss, that fight is completely reset and the boss goes back to 100% of his life. Technically, it should have always been that way. That's pretty much how all ARPGs do it. But they are doing something for us. After dying to a boss during the campaign, you now respawn at the boss instead of having to start instead of at the start of the zone. So basically now you don't have to rerun through the zone to get back to that boss. You will spawn right back in that boss fight, being able to take him down. Skills this is always really exciting for people that build like myself. This patch adds Firebrand, a new Spellblade skill. So we don't really know what this is yet, but I'm sure they will do an update before we get 7.1 on it. This patch adds e Eternal Shade, a new Acolyte skill which replaces Cremate. And I have that right here. Basically, it's exactly like Dread Shade, except it's going to be a Fire skill. And then we have this patch adds Shield Bash, a new Sentinel skill. Now, this is the skill that I'm actually most excited about. I've been saying for a while that Sentinel needs love and that shields need love. So I'm actually created. I created a level 70 from scratch Sentinel Paladin, all focused around block percent in weight of this skill. So I'm hoping I can make a pretty cool build around shield bash. So stay tuned. But ultimately, this is what the base mechanic of it looks like. Hopefully it turns into a fun skill. This patch also removes Defile, Ice Ward, Manifest Weapon, and Molten Blade. Now in 7.10, Acolytes are getting a lot of love from a visual perspective. All of Acolytes animations are being replaced, and patch 7.10 includes a new set of armor models for the Acolyte class, and they've kind of already shown us what that looks like. This is a picture that they dropped, shows kind of the real life items that they're trying to mold it after. These are some of the drawn images on the screen now. Then down here, as far as the actual artwork that they're using for the game, and then the actual 3D models of it inside the game. So 
I think it looks okay. We'll have to see when it's actually inside the game, but it is definitely an upgrade from what we have right now. And Acolyte is my favorite character, so I always like it when they show them the respect they deserve. The user interface is also getting an update for 7.10, and we have a picture of what that's going to look like. So what's on the screen right now is what the new user interface will look like. Now, obviously, it has all the skills available for just the primal list and all the specializations. So Beastmaster, Shaman, and Druid. Now, the difference is, is one, every skill will be on here. You'll be able to click into the skill to be able to see its individual tree. It'll tell you what kind of damage the skill does. So whether it's earth, lightning, poison, fire, ice, it'll show that with these little pictures and marks here. And it'll show you what you have to do to unlock skills. It requires 20 points into Shaman to be able to get Avalanche. And it shows you all these other different ways to unlock it. So this user interface, even though it looks like a small detail, it does matter. Because right now the user interface, you can't look at the tree unless you've unlocked the skill. It doesn't show you the different damages for them. And this is just a much neater, nicer, more professional way of doing the skills. Now, last and certainly not least is the future. Now, one thing that I really love about 11th Hour's games is they always tease us about what's coming after the next patch. So right now, they're already giving us a glimpse of what's going to come after 7.10 before we ha even have 7.10. So check this out. Patch 7.9 implemented Monolith of Fate updates from Phase 4 of our early access forecast. Patch 7.10 includes loot filters from Phase 4. Our next patch, Point 8, will stick with the 4 theme, a bit a little different. It features 4 items from Phase 3. So what's in Phase 3? Well, I have the map right here. So, Phase 3, okay? We know for sure in Phase 3 we are not getting multiplayer. Okay, so you can cross out multiplayer. And at the end here, it says item and crafting updates. We're getting some item and crafting updates in this update, so I would guess that that's also not going to potentially be on 8.0. So what else are there? Chapter 8 content, Rogue Class, Marksman Mastery, Blade Dancer Mastery, End Game System, so a new end game, Dual Wielding, Lost Memories, and Legendary Items. So we are for sure on the next update after 7.10 going to get four of these from phase three and for sure multiplayer will not be one of them. Now, they did say that they are doing the internal testing for multiplayer right now, but unfortunately, that's not going to be coming on the next update. And I know there are so many people waiting for that, but that really is a mechanic that needs to be mastered before you drop it, because if you do that too soon, you're going to get server crashes and you're going to upset the community. So as much as I want multiplayer, I do want it done correctly. So I am willing to wait again. This is an early access game. So four things are coming for from phase three on the next update. OK, real talk. Maybe I'm a little biased, but right now, Last Epoch is my favorite ARPG out right now. And this thing's really only in phase two, phase three of early access. But I am having so much fun. And that is because of the team at 11th Hour Games. I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, you are doing an amazing job. You don't have the huge budgets of these other game companies, but the way you communicate with your community, how fast you're getting out these updates and focus the, on the right things. So very, very nice job. Don't stop. Keep the pedal to the metal and we will continue to support you here on YouTube and other platforms. So thank you. Just want to put a thank you out there. I'm having a lot of fun playing your game, and so is my community, and we talk about it all the time in Discord. So what does everybody think? 7.10. Are you happy with this update? Are you excited for it to drop? Hopefully within the next week, let me know in the comment section below. If you have not joined the official Action RPG Discord, please do so. We're now at 340 members, great conversations every day. The idea is to create a gaming community that could jump from game to game together so you never start the server alone. Link for that Discord is in the description. 
Thank you all for watching. Stay home, stay safe. Do not forget to join the official Action RPG Discord. Aaron, out. <laughs>